Indonesia's president came with what he called a gift. Love to see it. You bring the rain. <laughs> you are the rain man. Not rain, but trade. A deal that will see almost all Australian exports enter Indonesia tariff-free. In return, this country will look to ease visitor restrictions. Simplify and streamline the issues of entry into Australia. Joko Widodo given the honour of addressing Parliament. Good day, mate. Just the second Indonesian president to do so. A friend in need is a friend indeed. One old friend with a new vantage point, there to see the trade negotiations he started sealed by the man who succeeded him. Malcolm Turnbull making his first visit to Parliament since his toppling, but still facing questions on climate and coal. It's been a a fault line in the coalition for a very long time. That fault line now a chasm. The key thing from my perspective is that the Commonwealth shouldn't be in the business of building or, or funding a new coal-fired power station. That provoked open warfare. Nationals MP George Christensen slamming inner city Liberals for backing renewables, while his Senate colleague... Renewable energy are the dull bludgers of the energy system. Those people who are advocating that the government should fund coal-fired power are basically making a case for higher emissions and higher energy prices, and that is nuts. The Nationals' anger transcends policy, with a Barnaby Joyce ally and Michael McCormack critic abandoning the party room to sit solo. I still remain a loyal uh, and faithful uh, government member. No amount of marketing or spin <laughs> can hide the humiliation. Labor leapt on the defection of Lou O'Brien to make immediate mischief teaming up with a half dozen rebel nationals to install him as deputy speaker, a job that comes with a 20% pay rise. Losing control of parliament might have more serious consequences next time.